Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Garbare High Tech Films Limited Q1 FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Vikas Verma from EY. Thank you, sir, and over to you. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the quarter one FY24 earnings call for Garware High Tech Films Limited. On behalf of the company, I would like to express our gratitude to each of you joining the call today. To discuss the performance of the company and to answer the question, we have with us from the company Mr. M. S. Atsul. Director Technical, Mr. Deepak Joshi, Director of Sales and Marketing, Mr. Pradeep Mehta, the Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Sunil Wadikar, President, Corporate Affairs and Finance, Mr. Hari Nayar, Senior President, Corporate Affairs and Finance. Before we begin, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that today's discussion may contain forward-looking statements that are subject to various risks, uncertainties, and other factors which will be beyond management control. We kindly request that you bear in mind there may be uncertainties when interpreting such statements. Please note that this conference is being recorded. We will now start the session with opening remarks from management team. Afterwards, we will open the floor for interactive Q&A session. I would now like to invite Mr. Deepak Joshi, Director of Sales and Marketing, to make his opening remarks. Over to you, Deepak Ji. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, good afternoon to all dear investors. Uh, we started the financial year with a strong performance despite difficulties in the industry such as global economic issues and oversupply. Our total revenue in Q1 FY24 was rupees 380 crores, which is a 2.70 percentage increase from Q1 FY23. Additionally, our EBITDA increased by 2.9% to rupees 72.7 crore and our PAT remained stable at rupees 44 crore. These achievements are due to our focus on producing specialty films which accounted for 83% of our total revenues in Q1 FY24. That is up from 80% same, uh, I mean uh, up from 80% in QI FY23. Approximately 70% of the income is generated from exporting goods with 35% of the figure coming from North America and 20.3% from Asia, excluding India, uh, around 15% uh, from rest of the world, which includes Europe, and 30.60% domestic market, that is India. Our exceptional performance was due to surge in quantity of pain protection film in our home and overseas markets, but was dampened by weak demand for solar control films in significant markets, mainly caused by economic, geopolitical, and destocking factors. Let me explain uh, briefly about our main product lines. So on consumer product line, uh, this turnover uh, of these uh, uh, consumer product line mainly consists of sun control films and paint protection films. So the turnover increased by more than 20% in Q1 compared to same period last year. We have uh, reintroduced the safety glazing window film in the domestic market due to high latent demand. Our safety glazing films improve fuel efficiency, high UV rejection, protecting passengers from skin cancer, more crucially, injuries caused by shattering glasses. So it's a combination of safety as well as uh, sun control properties. We are in the process of creating our sales and distribution network in India to meet the domestic demand. And we anticipate that our efforts will be reflected in our bottom line uh, in the coming quarters. Our key export market, the US, fared better than projected due to macroeconomic improvements leading to higher volume, especially in the premium segment during Q1 FY24 as compared to Q4 FY23. 
this momentum is expected to continue in the coming quarters sales of our solar control films remain stable our original production lines for solar control films are running full our efforts are to have the new line which started in december 22 that is around 6 7 months back i mean our aim is to fully utilize it in next two financial years the unutilized capacity of the sun control film is an additional headroom for of rupees 500 to 550 crore and our marketing efforts will be to capture these revenues one aspect that we are closely watching is the demand for solar control films in electric vehicles which typically takes more films than the normal vehicles let me talk about paint protection film ppf sales increased by almost 7 times in q1 fy24 our domestic business has grown significantly owing largely to its increased distribution network and asset allied application studios which have been supplemented by efficient marketing campaigns nearly 35 to 40 lakh cars are sold annually in india and nearly 40% is suv and luxury car segment which is essentially the target segment for ppf in india we also see there is a robust demand in international because ppf is still a commodity which is increasing its penetration world over uh, the the advanced countries like usa and china they are at the rate of 10 to 12% of penetration and india is at the rate of less than 0.5% penetration so the headroom in india is huge but at the same time the growth continues in these advanced markets where ppf is a south after commodity that is also increasing so we see there is a robust demand uh, outlook for this product in q1 fy24 we had about 50% capacity utilization which is purely dedicated to ppf but as of as of now as we speak capacity is uh, uh, going full and we believe to have enough demand less traction to ensure full capacity in the coming quarters fact we have some fungible lines for fungible capacities which can be utilized to produce more of ppf and at the same time if this trend continues and which we are seeing right now we may look for further expansion in this segment now let me take you to our industrial product division turnover of industrial product division is going down it in fact it is dropped by around 15 to 20% india has a surplus capacity as of now and the demand is also going low this uh, the lower demand is primarily because of the seasonality where we are seeing lot of rains and undistributed um, i mean uh, uh, uh i can say uh, the season has been very turbulent this year with lot of rains and unexpected rains and at the same time as i mentioned there is a huge over capacity into the market margins have gone down we understand that uh, the other peers in the commodity business have also lost volumes and incurred losses or uh, or uh, their margins have dropped similarly our volumes are down too as we avoid loss making sales in industrial product division but our silk shrink film is doing stable and other specialty products like low oligomer are also stable the sales uh, sales uh, volume revenue and as well as the uh, uh, bottom line is also stable there but the concern is the commodity product which anyways we are avoiding and going more and more into specialized segments and focus is on to consumer productivity uh pearl float and solid white shrink which we uh, have uh, i mean which we produced and took trial in last uh, uh, couple of months are now commercialized so this is the update on uh, industrial product division now i would like mr mehta to touch base little bit about the finance uh, thank you deepak uh, Uh, Deepak already has given key financial number. In addition to that, uh, we have paid uh, around 50 crore uh, debt uh, in this financial year, uh, which is resulting into current outstanding term loan balance at 73 crore as on 31st July. 
uh, we are also able to achieve a solid ROC of around 20%, which is indicating an optimum utilization of funds generated in the business. Our robust working capital management practices have improved our working capital cycle days to just uh, 17 days uh, during this Q1 FY24. So we, we have already uh, published our earning numbers and uh, investor presentation is up today. So now I think we can proceed to Q&A session. Yeah. I mean, uh, we hope uh, that uh, you you would have gone through the presentation which has been uploaded. So, I mean, uh, we are not going through the presentation, but if any questions arises uh, from the presentation, we will be happy to take uh, during the question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchtone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Rahul Jain from Credence Wealth. Please go ahead. Hello. <coughs> Am I audible? Yes. Thanks for the opportunity and congratulations uh, team for a wonderful set of results. Uh, with regards to the question number one is regards to the Excuse me, sir. The current participant seems to have dropped from the queue. We will proceed with the next question, which is from the line of uh, Chiral Singhal from First Water Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on a great set of numbers, sir. Uh, so, firstly, I wanted to uh, you know understand or get some validation on the company's growth pace uh, for the next five six years. So based on the current expansions and, you know, you also spoke about some new products during the last quarter, do you expect to at least see a growth rate of, let's say, 15% kind of number or or you see it as, you know, uh, too ambitious? I mean, uh, uh, you, uh, you are talking of the growth numbers on revenue and uh, uh, bottom line or... Uh, General market. Sorry, I was not clear on the question. No, no not not the industry either. I'm talking about the uh, your company's uh, revenue and bottom line either. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, I can uh, I can say um, as as we said we have a capacity which was commissioned in December 23. Uh, sorry, December 22 for Sun Control Films, which is now being utilized in a stepwise manner. So we are seeing good growth there. And at the same time, pain protection still utilization is also going towards full. So with these two, uh, we are expecting uh, the growth uh, uh, to happen uh, uh, in line or, uh, uh, I mean, we expect quite good growth in that. The only challenge was from the other side, which is industrial product. But put together, uh, these growth would uh, definitely uh, 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 make up uh, for um, uh, whatever... Uh, down, downturn or whatever we are seeing on industrial products. So in net net, I'm sure we will achieve that uh, uh, numbers which you are seeing, 15% or 20%. Okay, got it. Uh, now my second question is on the uh, 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 you know the contribution from the backward integration that you have. So uh, you uh, are present across the value chain, right from PT MEG to the final valuated product. So how yeah. much would backward integration contribute to your uh, sustainable EBITDA margins? Actually, uh, I mean, uh, difficult to quantify, but, you know, uh, uh, there are some key factors uh, which helps us uh, to, to make consistent quality and, uh, uh, you know, uh, the uh, I mean, consistent new product development and consistent quality. These are definitely which we are always ahead uh, with the competitors. And recently, in last uh, couple, of, uh, I mean, I can say uh, since last two three years, our focus has always been 
to launch the new products like we did PPF and uh, we did uh, uh, on uh, floatable shrink and solid white shrink and all those things. So these are all coming because of our capability to uh, make the raw materials for our products. So uh, when we talk of, uh, as again, uh, our, if you see the numbers of the peers where they have been, it is going continuously down. But for in our case, and we have been able to maintain our new product line and continuous growth uh, because of this. So uh, whenever there is a better uh, market for uh, uh, commodity side, then you would have seen a much, much better numbers than our uh, uh, numbers we have shown uh, currently. So uh, in other words, that helps us uh, a lot and that will and in fact give us higher EBITDA margins in going forward whenever we, I mean, you know, continuously innovate on our uh, uh, components. Right. And even on a blanket basis, I think the numbers uh, should be higher than 70-80%, right? Because currently, uh, if, if I look at your sales mix, 20% is coming from the commodity prints. So once we see a normalized margin in the commodity prints as well, uh, the blended numbers should be slightly higher than what they're doing uh, currently. Is that the right understanding? Uh, yes, uh, actually the margins, again, uh, it depends on the product mix and uh, understanding is really uh, uh, correct because uh, if you see commodity uh, market has been going down, so we are also selling less and less, but it's still our uh, revenue and uh, bottom line increasing. That is only because of uh, the specialty products we are increasing and commodity we are uh, reducing. So, uh, I mean, in net-net, uh, EBITDA margin should increase from there. Understood, sir. Uh, that was really helpful. Uh, so, you also mentioned about those new products. Uh, so, uh, could you please share the products as well as the market size based on which products are likely to hit the markets first? Sorry, uh, I mean, uh, the products uh, and their market size. I think we have given uh, clearly into uh, the presentation where we have shown uh, like three uh, key products, which is our sun control film, uh, and then uh, their market is currently $6 billion, uh, and uh, then paint protection I film. was the new products, actually, the new products that you are currently working on. During the last phone call, you spoke about three to four products that uh, might be at the R&D level and, uh, you know, uh, some of the products. Uh, so I'm just talking about the products that are likely to hit the markets first uh, uh, from your new product categories. What, which products would they be and what is their market size? Uh, there, there are many products, but uh, because of, uh, you know, the competitive edge and everything, we would uh, rather not declare unless it comes to market. Like we have declared that uh, pearl float which is uh, towards the sustainability of uh, shrink films. So that product once it came into four and now commercialized that we declared that that has come. We have a list of, uh, we walk on the priority basis. So our R&D team led by Mr. Arsul and the new product development team, they have their target products which are uh, at least 10 products, top 10 products which we are currently working on. And each quarter you will see uh, uh, at least uh, two to three products coming out uh, to the market. And uh, then uh, we are going to announce. We cannot do it right now uh, to, uh, I mean, for our, uh, as I said, because uh, um, uh, this is for the competi competition uh, sake. We can't declare them. Got it. Got it, sir. Uh, and uh, so just one last question before I go back into the queue. Uh, uh, if you can please provide a roadmap, uh, you know, for the next phase of expansion in DPF as well as uh, sun control films and other product categories. Uh, also, are you running that full capacity utilization for the uh, shrink films? Uh, yes, on shrink films also uh, we are running full, but uh, we have some fungible capacities where we used to sell shrink film also. And uh, these uh, these fungible capacities are not being utilized. So there is a dedicated line for shrink which runs full, but there is another fungible capacity which we used to run when the market was peak. So I can say the the market when it used to like uh, last year when the summer was really good, that time we were using the fungible capacities as well. But this year we are not because of uh, lower than the expected demand on shrink. Okay, and, and uh, if you can please comment on the roadmap for the next phase of expansions in PPF 
as well as uh, Sun Control Film. So, uh, uh, roadmap on that, as I said, uh, we have some uh, like uh, we have some unutilized capacities on the new lamination line, which was commissioned six eight months back. So there we have some fungible benefits where uh, we can utilize it to increase. We cannot fully utilize, but you can. We can utilize some portion to increase the productivity on PPF, which uh, we will uh, first do, or we are in the process of doing. In the meantime, also making these plans, which we'll announce shortly. As uh, I mean, we are working on that direction. And on uh, on sun control, we have added around 70 percent, 70 percent. Uh, recently, uh, so we are uh, seeing the response, which uh, will be finalized in next three to months, uh, six months time. So we will update accordingly. So in PPF, you said that. Sorry to interrupt. We request you to please rejoin the sure. queue for follow-up questions. The next question is from the line of Rahul Jain from Credence Wealth. Please go ahead. <coughs> Thanks for the opportunity. Am I audible now? Yes, you're audible, Hello? sir. Sure. Thank you for the opportunity. Congratulations, team, for a good set of numbers. So, sir, uh, firstly, with regards to the reintroduction of the safety glass film, so what kind of market do we see? What kind of scale-up we are looking forward and what kind of traction till now we have been seeing in this product after the change of rules and reintroduction of this product? Uh, we have launched that product uh, during this month only. That was 10th of the August, and we published that widely on digital and social media. And our team uh, ran the projects, uh, specific projects targeting uh, the customer, targeting the detailing centers and showrooms. Uh, I mean, uh, we have done more than 300 showrooms in uh, India, in Mumbai itself. So we are doing such kind of projects right now in. Uh, Bangalore and Pune markets. So we are seeing the response really good. I mean, uh, we have started, I can say, around uh, whatever, uh, um, uh, uh, I mean, the, the response is really good. And we have started, uh, uh, I mean, we started only on 10th August. And as we speak, we started getting orders also. So we are getting good traction. And uh, people are really uh, caring for that. So the, our only, uh, um, uh, I mean, plan is to, uh, as per the government regulation, 50% and 70% visual light transmission we are proposing. And uh, with that, we are getting very good traction. And, uh, and we started getting orders also, and that's a really good sign uh, of this product. So typically, what is the potential part? Sorry, sir, can you just... Uh, what is the potential of revenues in, uh, with regard to this? Uh, potential revenue, if I say uh, domestic market um, uh, is roughly, I can say, around uh, 80 to 90 CR per annum, um, uh, say 100 CR per annum. That is potential. I mean, uh, we, uh, I mean, we don't know as of now when we can reach there. Uh, and uh, around, uh, I mean, you can assume based on that uh, what EBITDA level would be, around 20 CR. Sure, that's helpful. Second, sir, on the PPS, am I missing something? Uh, in the quarter one, we utilized almost roughly around 47, 48% our PPS utilization. And based on the numbers which are there in presentation, what I understand is we have done a sales of around 60 crores in quarter one. Yeah. So typically at peak utilization, it looks like we can probably go beyond 450 crores for PPS. Is that a correct understanding? Just a second. You understand? No, it was little, the line was little unclear. So, uh, uh, can you just repeat the question? Rest I understood, uh, like uh, our utilization was close to 50%. And uh, what you would like to know on that? So, work, so back working the numbers, uh, our PPF sales should have around 60 crores in quarter one at around 50% utilization. Yeah. So typically that means at peak we can reach around 450, 500 crores of revenue. Is that correct? Correct. That is correct. Yes. Okay. Okay. And your presentation also mentioned that currently we are working at maximum utilization. So does yes. that mean we are roughly working today at around uh, utilization of somewhere beyond 85-90% to the tune of 80 to 100 crores somewhere or more? 
Yeah, so indication is in the same line, but we are, since we are in the quarter, I would avoid uh, uh, talking exact numbers, but uh, yes, broadly, if, if we can say the guidelines, it is in that direction, yes. Oh, that's quite helpful because I think that means uh, for PPF, it looks like now we are going to achieve much higher turnover than what we were visualizing uh, some quarters back. Uh, lastly, sir, uh, on the uh, export side, uh, you have mentioned in your initial commentary and also the presentation about uh, some amount of recovery on the U.S. side uh, So and uh, some challenges in Europe and U.K., Yes. So typically, and also you mentioned in the presentation that we have increased uh, resources in international markets. So just to get a sense what exactly we are doing on the international markets in terms of additional resources, what we tend to do, and uh, is the recovery in U.S. Uh, continuing to improve on a month-to-month -month basis? Uh, yes, we are seeing actually... Uh, um, Right now, it's a season in uh, USA. That means uh, summer is going on. So with that, uh, we are seeing uh, the numbers. Uh, there is a good uh, increase in uh, numbers uh, from US market. And uh, uh, we expect that because if you really see, um, if you recall last nine months, that is second half of last financial year and first quarter of uh, this financial year, there was actually a lot of, uh, you know, uh, 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 there was like high interest rates and uh, high inflation were causing the sales a little bit uh, down because, uh, because of uh, that affected the overall scenario into the market. And plus, uh, uh, there was a geopolitical tension which is going on right now in uh, next to Europe. So because of that, the, the um, I mean, uh, I would say, uh, the environment was not that good and we were seeing the numbers also uh, similarly uh, towards a uh, little lower than what uh, what we expected as a growth. But right now we are seeing these kind of uh, fears are going down and the order flow from uh, rest of the world has increased. At the same time, it has also gone up from USA. And when we talk to the big customers in USA and we have seen who does survey for us, so these kind of um, uh, uh, fears or uh, kind of uh, people were expecting a little bit down uh, the previous year since life, last nine months. So these kind of fears have been now swayed away. I mean, they, people are uh, talking better than what it is. So which are, uh, uh, I mean, evident from the numbers also. So we expect similar things to uh, go in the going forward in this year. And what we are doing, so we are again, uh, we have, uh, we are uh, doing a lot of marketing activities. We have recently done um, some, uh, you know, uh, uh, we have done some kind of uh, rallies where uh, global brand was a primary brand uh, sponsoring them. So at the same time, uh, digital media, social media presence is going good. At the same time, we have added uh, top level headcount from very uh, reputed companies in uh, Singapore for Far Eastern market, then in uh, UK for European market, and on the process for a similar uh, one high talent in uh, Middle East market. We already have our presence all over the world, like uh, North America, we have, as you know, we have subsidiary in UK and in USA. So both places we have uh, local employees who are native to those countries, then we have in South America, then we have people in Africa, in Russia also, as we speak, we have uh, still uh, continued uh, Russia for Russia and CIS countries. Then Europe, we have a team. Then Far East, Middle East, everywhere we have people China. present. Even China, sorry. Yeah. So all the places we have our team, which are continuously into the market looking for prospects. So our brand uh, recall is quite a strong global in these markets and Darware in, in the rest of the markets. Sure. So last question, if I can squeeze in, with increasing proportion of PPF uh, from this quarter itself, and also uh, considering that the utilizations have gone up to optimum, and improvement in sun control uh, in the coming quarters, can we expect margins to be uh, higher than the current margins, and 
probably that could be around 100 to 200 bits higher than what we are clocking in the current quarter i don't think uh, i mean <laughs> this question uh, uh, is like a very forward looking uh, statement like uh, how we are doing i'm saying we we are doing uh, better but exact numbers we can't uh, discuss thank you Ladies and gentlemen, to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants, please limit your questions to two per participant. You may rejoin the queue for follow-up questions. We have the next question from the line of Sanjay Shah from KSA Securities, Shares and Securities Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Thanks for the opportunity. So, first of all, very nice presentation. Very self-explanatory. Uh, so, my question was regarding string films. Uh, as you have portrayed a global demand which is coming for that uh, segment, which is growing at a good CAGR, so so is the competition. And I think in India also we have got many manufacturers, many brands who are competing on this side. So how we see what how Garware will be doing and competing and uh, maintaining and retaining the margin and market share on this segment? Uh, okay. I mean, thanks for your compliments. Uh, so, uh, Garware, if you, uh, I mean, if uh, we can go a little bit on the history, like we have a very strong uh, team of R&D, and there is a work more than 20 years uh, put into uh, these special products. Uh, so, you know, manufacturing these films is not easy, and many of our peers have tried into the past. Uh, and uh, till date, hardly anybody is uh, there into the market uh, to compete. But of course, even if the competitor comes, we are selling to more than 90 countries into, in the world, and uh, that includes uh, North America, South America, and Europe being uh, one of the primary market for us. So uh, we have, uh, like these products, we are continuously increasing our portfolio by giving exact requirements uh, as per the pro product line of the customers. Like uh, each, uh, sub uh, each uh, the, I would say, the bottle or each um, uh, product is very different in nature, and Garware has capability to meet the shrinkage of them. So we make high shrink, low shrink, medium shrink, all kind of shrinks, and we have developed a step ahead when we go to uh, the advanced markets like USA, where uh, dairy products are used with the solid white shrinks to avoid the UV uh, rays falling into the dairy products. So we have that developed, and uh, we have uh, like uh, advanced markets are the customer for these products. And then um, for environmental sustainability, we are the only one who are certified by Association of Plastic Recyclers, that is APR in USA and Europe. So our, the level which we talk is uh, nobody is near uh, to uh, what Garware does. And at the same time, I would also like to mention here that Garware also makes its own resin. We do our own petrochemical to make our own resin. Wherever who has tri whoever has tried in India or making in India are using the imported uh, resin from China, Taiwan, or Korea. We have all the intelligence on that. But Garware is unique proposition with their own in-house uh, uh, capabilities. And that's why our products are very consistent in quality and always best in class. So as of now, we don't see any, any such competition which is at par with the quality of Garware. And even the best, our uh, competitors in USA, they they respect the brand Garware for its quality. That's really very helpful, sir. So my second question was regarding PPF. Uh, we have right now 300 LSF capacity, and that is also we are increasing from here. So how that will satisfy the growing demand geography-wise? Because I suppose now even we are penetrating and opening new sales office across the globe. Uh, from uh, US to China everywhere, and India is also growing. So can you highlight, in, uh, let us uh, make it a bit clear that how the uh, vertical will share the uh, turnover uh, percentage-wise? Uh, so, uh, mm, 
We have, as we said, the capacity is uh, 300 uh, LSF uh, annually. And uh, then we have some capacities which we can use as a fungible capacity. Like I, I explained in shrink also, I, uh, we have discussed in the past on sun control also. So the capacities where we feel uh, the demand is little low, uh, there we have uh, facilities uh, to utilize those fungible uh, capacities. So we have a quite big headroom beyond uh, 300 LSF. Uh, uh, because, and uh, we will uh, use those capacities to cater the demand which has been created by a wonderful uh, job from uh, by our sales and marketing team and our new product team which has always been giving uh, added products, value added products beyond uh, 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 each of them like in shrink film also, like in paint protection film also. So we will cater in this way. And at the same time, we are also considering expansion, which will be announced once uh, things uh, fall in line. And uh, uh, we have, just to update the forum, that uh, we have uh, recently launched uh, MAT PPF, and further two new variants are uh, in process of uh, manufacturing. So my last question was regarding uh, this current heat wave going on in uh, the other regions like Europe and other countries. Do we see any advantage for our product growing the demand side uh, moving on, especially Europe? Yeah, actually, uh, as I said, uh, the demand from Europe has gone up. Uh, so one of the reasons is the same what you are saying. But paint protection film is unaffected by any uh, because it, it no, does sun not. control films. My question was regarding sun control. I think? Sun control films. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So sun control, definitely yes. Wherever uh, we feel, uh, uh, whenever mm -hmm. there is a uh, high temperature and all these factors come in, so sun control demand goes up. Your understanding is right, sir. Right. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Good luck. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Harsh M. from Chris PMS. Please go ahead. Congratulations on a good set of numbers. Wanted to check on a couple of things. One is we have hired uh, consultants recently, so wanted to understand what uh, you know value they have been added and when can we see uh, the value addition flowing down to our PML in terms of revenue and pack. Uh, yeah, on the consultants, uh, they are uh, working uh, really good, and their job is to create market for us in the domestic uh, market. So, uh, I mean, uh, the Garware application studio, uh, as we shared in our presentation, from current numbers to 200 numbers, uh, we have reached. Then uh, we have to uh, uh, make them as per our corporate identity. So that is there. Then um, uh, putting uh, OEs, uh, like manufacturers, uh, with us uh, is another responsibility plus adding distributors and right channel partners everywhere, pan-India, based on uh, number of cars sold, number of luxury cars sold, who are the competitors arranged, how to get our business uh, from, uh, I'm going to say, I create the business from nowhere, and how to get the business from uh, our peers by showing our quality and uh, making it clear that we are the best choice uh, for our consumers. So this all is their responsibility. Whereas uh, if we talk of the, um, how it uh, will help us in bottom line, so again, quantification of that will, will happen a little later, but this will help us company uh, for next, uh, I would say, um, from now to next three to five years, because that is a brand creation and that is a creation of a network where we were not present. And another way is like we have resources all around, but putting so much resources in India is, uh, I mean, we are doing that, but at the same time, the consultants have a huge uh, resources. Uh, so in terms of their uh, understanding of the market by their other, by, by their experience of uh, so many years uh, to penetrate the market faster and get the results faster. So that is another uh, way they will be helpful to us. Okay, makes sense. 
and uh, in your opening remarks you had mentioned that you have lost some volumes in the commodity business so just you know wanted to understand if you could share the volume numbers also even for ppf not just at the revenue level so we can you know see the traction which is coming in volume terms because price movements could impact on revenue so if you could share that it would be helpful maybe now or you know later in the uh, next uh, investor presentation yeah we can do that but uh, what i meant uh, i think uh, we all understood uh, just to make clear uh, when we are talking on commodity so we were talking on industrial product like packaging segment which we have been continuously reducing over many years the percentage of uh, commodity segment so there we lost volume and uh, we don't uh, in fact uh, not very much after that because our main focus is the specialty business so whenever uh, we talk of the label business or simple packaging business uh, in uh, pet so there uh, well, we have lost volume and uh, these volume and that's why uh, i mean uh, we have added more and more volumes on uh, specialty uh, especially from ppf and now on sun control and on the shrink and everything so we'll try to make up from there uh, but commodity of course uh, is not a south after commodity for us and uh point noted and we can uh, uh, i mean uh, put uh, some kind of uh, you know numbers uh, going forward uh, like what is uh, what dropped uh, to how much dropped uh, for commodity sector okay and just last question what you said uh, i understand that you said that you're working on the capex plans but you know assuming that we have a good year and we are more than 80% utilized this year so we'll be able to add new lines in first half of next year would that be feasible that or there is a lead time to get those machines and then build the infrastructure and get it started because the way you know we've been discussing in the call it seems that the demand is very good and we would need a new line probably sooner than we've expected before the uh, 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 typical timeline for adding a line is uh, one year because uh, garware has already uh, like when uh, uh, we have a dedicated ppf line and we have a space uh, for another line to be added up uh, with all uh, things being uh, uh, i mean available at the same time on sun control also we always make uh, make provision for uh, the next expansion so we have done those provisions in both uh, ppf and sun control whenever they come that means building and other utilities utilities are near buildings is ready we just have to call machine and put utilities to do that so we are on advanced level of uh, doing all those things so that's all i can update so within a year that's uh, quite possible uh, uh, to uh, to uh, to add another line okay perfect thank you so much that's the plan thank you very much thank you The next question is from the line of Ankit Gupta from Bamboo Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations for the uh, good set of numbers in uh, tough times. Uh, first question was on the PPF. You know, this this quarter itself we have done almost 58, 60 crore kind of revenue from PPF, and last year we had done some some somewhere around 75 crore. So, what is driving this growth? Is it uh, you know? Is it the you know uh, the our indian business is doing well our us business is doing well or our you know uh, third party manufacturing for uh, other uh, players uh, so what is driving growth uh, to such an extent even this quarter we are, uh, we are saying that we have reached uh, optimal capacity utilization so uh, i mean uh, first of all thank you very much for your compliment and uh, the the factor behind the growth is uh, the work which we have been doing in last 3 uh, uh, years uh, to establish the product because it is a product uh, takes typically at least a year uh, for, from scratch to qualify that and it's a very tricky and complicated product in terms of quality because uh, many things can go wrong there are five components in ppf and all are very very critical for its manufacturing so it takes a lot of time and we have been putting hard work uh, to get uh, these things done so uh, as as we discussed on garware application studio in india another effort is you know uh, in india uh, i'll i'll just explain you 
when we started, uh, some people wanted to put uh, PPF in their top end cars, but we were not able to get the applicators for the same. So we started a drive uh, to train the applicators, and we are now doing 50 applicators every month, uh, a two days training, and we also doing refreshers for them. And our team is going uh, to wherever they are, like even in Bhuneshwar, uh, Kolkata, be it Kochi, or any Lucknow, Kanpur, any cities in India. We have applicators on our role, and we are promising uh, these people, like uh, they should be uh, started doing uh, the PPF, and our team will be there to give the initial support, even after uh, giving the trainings and refresher trainings. So that kind of huge network or huge work is going on to create uh, the momentum on the ground. Uh, so we have seen, this is only one of the difficulty I'm sharing, but uh, we have been able to do that. That's why we have seen a 10 times growth on year to year uh, from last year to this year on uh, uh, PPF, right? This is one. And at the same time, we have customers who, who buy from us, uh, like, you know, window prints all across the world. And we have a very strong channel uh, networks where we sell these products to them. So it was, uh, like, uh, again, not easy to get qualified because many of them were not doing PPF. And many of them were using very advanced products, which, uh, I mean, we were very new to the market. But over a period of uh, three years' time, we have been able to get all uh, this into uh, our basket. And uh, so that's been uh, for us. Sure. So on our gun control sims, we saw a uh, degrowth in, in the Q1, but uh, as for your initial commentary and as mentioned in the presentation, we, our outlook for gun control sim is also improving. So on a year-on-year -year basis for the full year, do we expect, you know, and control films to at least grow by 10 15 percent. Oh, sir, your voice was, you know, a little bit, uh, uh, I mean, uh, not clear. I mean, uh, there was wobbles in that. Uh, please uh, say it again, sir. So, so uh, on gun control things, uh, you know, our outlook seems to be improving. So, uh, you know, despite uh, degrowth that we have seen in quarter one uh, of this year, so for the full year, can we expect, uh, you know, at least 10 15 percent kind of growth in gun control films? Yeah. See, numbers are not, uh, I mean, uh, I can't give uh, here because uh, I have to do all those things. But definitely, as I said, uh, the growth, uh, uh, I mean, uh, demand uh, is back. And one of the reasons also, which I uh, was talking previously, I, I, I would like to add that. One was, one another factor was last year, uh, there were a lot of, uh, you know, inventory was kept by uh, uh, our distributors uh, or to per se, this, this was true everywhere. Even Walmart and Costco and all those people also got a lot of inventory in first half of uh, 2022 because the growth demand after COVID is suddenly surged and at the same time shipping challenges were there. But second half of last year, suddenly everything went down with the expectations of the recessionary trends and again high inflation everywhere in Europe and USA. So uh, there were inventory which was which uh, which uh, was there for eight nine months without being uh, uh, without being sold by our uh, distributors and the channel partners world over. So that correction inventory correction has also completed uh, during uh, I understand in last eight to nine months. So that's why uh, this is another factor uh, uh, on top of uh, the good uh, seasons in Europe and US. Sure, sir. So last question was on, you know, any update on uh, land sale uh, at Nasik and Aurangabad. And, you know, we have a net cash uh, of almost 300 crore by end of this quarter. And hopefully this will further increase given our low working capital requirements as well as, you know, uh, hardly any capex required, uh, required, at least in the near term. So, you know, one request to the management was to, you know, increase the dividend payout, uh, you know, that will, uh, like, that will help us in, you know, uh, like, at least distributing more dividend to the, and to the shareholders. Yeah, I think uh, Hari Nair uh, would like to address the question. Sure, sure. Hari? Yeah. So there are other things also in pipeline, CapEx is in pipeline, other things are there. We will look into this matter also. And, and any update on land sale of Nasik and Urangaba? 
औरंगाबाद वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू सेल नो सी औरंगाबाद इज द फैक्ट्री इफ यू माइ वी विल नॉट सेल नासिक वी आर इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ गेटिंग इट गेटिंग फेवरेबल ऑर्डर सो सो एंड कैन वी एक्सपेक्ट सम न्यूज ऑन दैट बाय एंड ऑफ दिस ईयर शुड होपफुली मार्केट मार्केट होल्ड्स एवरीथिंग लाइक गुड प्राइस कम्स वी विल बी एबल टू डू इट सो सो थैंक यू मिस ऑल द रेस्ट थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू The next question is from the line of Dwanil Desai from Total Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good afternoon, everyone, and congratulations for the very decent performance. Uh, so, for first question is on the PPF side. So, yeah, in the current quarter, what would be the mix between the private label or white label and the brand? And going forward, the growth that we are seeing, uh, you know, from 50% utilization to a very high utilization in next 2 3 quarters so incremental growth will it come largely from white label because we understand you have started increasing supply to one of the leading players in you know overseas market so uh, you know some sense on that how the mix will play out uh, you know over next uh, you know 9 months to 2 years yeah um, so uh, the typical mix what we do is like uh, uh, it can be 60 to 70% on brand and 30% on white label the reason of that we are holding one of the biggest facilities of sun control producing sun control films and uh, one of the biggest uh, or biggest uh, dedicated uh, paint protection film line so uh, so that's why uh, there are some good uh, business propositions which we always do and uh, i mean so we have to do uh, both kind of businesses and we see which makes more sense for us it's a business decision uh, we uh, keep on taking time to time uh, so sorry what was your question after that so my question was that as we go forward will this mix change more towards white level because we understand we are increasingly supplying more to the leading ppf guy in the us market so you know if that okay. mix going to change more towards white level and has it impact does it have any impact on the margins no actually uh, this thing uh, in fact not one i mean we have uh, to be precise we have uh, many uh, such uh, suppliers on our uh, uh, portfolio and uh, that uh, so our trend has always been like to uh, cater both ways because we also compete with them our global brand and garware brand competes uh, with uh, all of them but uh, uh, that there is it won't uh, it won't change much i mean whatever we have been maintaining because strategic strategically also we keep that uh, under check where we Uh, we have a strategy to do 60 to 70 percent uh, on our brands and 30 percent on white label. Okay, just a follow up on that. So going by that, if we are seeing such a strong growth, uh, you know, on the PPF side in next two three quarters, does it mean that our brand sales also is going equally strongly? Uh, are we expecting that kind of a growth in our own branded sales also? So you are talking uh, our brand. Yeah. India, yeah, yeah your own guy uh, there was a question like uh, about the consultant also so what we are doing is uh, we are creating uh, first of all the demand for the product and at the same time um, we are uh, de- uh, creating a strong strong brand recall for our brand in uh, uh, domestic market as well as world over and already we have a very strong um, brand in uh, us uh, for global and for south america garware and uh, in india and uh, neighboring countries uh, we have a very strong brand uh, garware so we are continuously putting efforts to uh, to to uh, increase the brand presence and brand recall and through that's why we have hired the external agencies also and the social media agencies also we keep on going to the best in the world okay and the second question is on the sun control side especially in the us market uh so you know if we look at even the recent result of excel they have grown sun control at more than 30% and they then increasingly more revenue share is coming from sun control so any threat in terms of our market positioning competitive landscape and how we are competing more incentive we have to give to keep market share any color on that uh see uh 
actually if we really see the expansion uh, on the productivity there is hardly uh, i mean uh, in usa and europe market uh, there the uh, pro uh, i mean production capabilities or new manufacturing is not increasing whatever is increasing is into the china and korea and taiwan these kind of countries now the advantage of garware is garware makes them under deep tight uh, uh, polyester technology which is available to only uh, uh eastman group and uh, to garware right so uh, um, there may be a lot of uh, competition into the market but the real uh, the real uh, product quality comes from um, deep dyed uh, polyester deep by deep dyed window films where the product quality remains very stable it does not uh, fade away and many other properties comes like uh, uh, rejections and all those things are quite good uh, and lastly the aesthetic is also quite different so with this i mean with our uh, brand recall and uh, at the same time the uh, the partners who are working with us uh, world over with that support i think would be to be in fact uh, we will continuously to grow and uh, we keep a strong uh, track of all those things uh, through third party agencies also like how the market is going what is our market share is it uh, is there any threat or something so uh, there is uh, always there whoever is coming new into the market they are always trying to cater the very lower end market which we uh, we which our presence is very minimal because we are uh, high quality high end products so if i give you an example in india also if you want to do a car you can also do in 1 to 2000 versus our brand is around 20000 top end products so uh, our range is very uh, different from the competitors and that is continuously stable or growing into the rest of the world great sir okay very happy thank you thank you very much thank you the next question is from the line of shrinjana mittal from ratnatraya please go ahead um uh, thank you for the opportunity sir congrats on a good set of numbers uh just two quick questions one is a uh, like one on the on a pps line at like full utilization what is the revenue potential that we see so uh, actually um, we have uh, declared 300 crores but uh, now looking at uh, into that it might go even uh, beyond 400 crores so that's annual uh, that can go into that line okay understood thank you uh, also uh, the second is like a bookkeeping question sir so if you can provide the mix of uh, between the the sun control film and ppf film share in the last quarter uh, q4 fy23 uh, percentage of sun control and this is me sir to do you yes uh, it would be roughly if i if i give you uh, Uh, in the last quarter it is actually uh, revenue wise uh, it's like 65 to 70% of sun control and 30% of ppf mm -hmm. no so uh, actually so, yeah actually uh, what we are doing uh, to increase uh, the productivity of ppf we are using that in a fungible set of uh, this thing so it would be but still um, i mean 70 30% as of now and uh, with the growth that might increase 70% of uh, 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 sun control and 30% of ppf so out of the total uh, cpd division right so what would be that share like uh, we don't know that as well uh. yeah see uh, actually um, the, the as we said cpd all the facilities we uh, count together so giving that exact break up uh, uh will take some time i don't have uh, numbers in my hand so my finance will uh, and uh, that of thing thank you thank you the next question is from the line of yoganesh jiswani from metal analytics please go ahead hi sir thanks for the opportunity am i audible yes uh so uh couple of questions on your ppf business so uh, like Our, our, if my understanding is correct, your sun control film is uh, quite strong because of the backward integration that we have. While in the PPF, we still aren't very uh, backward integrated. We are still 
importing couple of films and editors and then uh, you know working on it in our facility so if you could share what is the technical expertise that we have in ppf how much is the value addition that we are doing and how uh, confident are we in terms of being able to make margin similar to how we have in scf given the limitation that we have in terms of backward integration yeah so uh, on uh, ppf uh, this is a relatively uh, fairly new business for us so to to stabilize the quality we have used some top of the class products uh, to start with but uh, we have actually almost all the components uh, developed except one uh, media film which is a different segment which is not a polyester film so apart from that all the components and uh, adhesives and everything have been uh, developed by our in house team and uh, it it will take some time your uh, understanding is uh, i would say outstanding uh, <laughs> so in going uh, uh, i can say 6 uh, month to 1 year time we will be i mean we have developed everything but uh, you know uh, the once the product is stabilized we have taken 3 years of hard work to penetrate into the market so before going to market with changes into the product we want, we always be doubly sure or triply sure and uh, we do our own aging test accelerated weathering test and lot of other tests before we put any minor change also takes a big uh, uh, i mean a long time period of validation process which our uh, r&d and npd team does that so uh, mr arsul if you would like to add anything on that yeah yeah in fact uh, this whole development process starts uh, from the laboratory and um, we are uh, we are fairly uh, close to commercialize some of uh, the raw material required for that ppf uh, finished ppf um, it it really takes uh, even for developing uh, one component lock like adhesive it takes almost a year uh, to uh develop like from laboratory to plant scale so it it it's a long long way journey i would say not even 6 months but at least uh, commercializing all this product takes around 1 to 1 and 1/2 year time to fully convert uh, in house uh, raw material yeah. for that yeah but in all said what uh, mr uh, i mean uh, arthu sir has already uh, explained but uh, we have as he said yeah. we have developed or we are in the final process of that but it will take some time uh, to come uh, to put into the market very slowly and uh, it will go there so it will be exactly like what we do 100% uh, in house components for sun control of more than 100 uh, skus similarly it will also happen in uh, ppf in fact some of the products are already uh, coming uh, i mean uh, with uh, our components already of course yeah okay so so uh, cfo assume say for next one or two years till the time we develop a lot of these raw materials in house and then we do the quality check and uh, whatever the requirements is so next one or two years as the business scales up this would be somewhere mid teams uh, evita margin business the ppf segment i'm talking about and once we uh, get all those things uh, stabilized then it can gradually move to 20% above evita margin perfect okay so uh, secondly again on the ppf side just to get a bit more understanding on the us side of our business so given that one of our largest customers is also having their own brand and we are doing uh contract manufacturing for them and we also have uh you know a vision to establish our own brand not just in us but in india and other markets also so uh, typically we have seen that such kind of uh, dynamics don't play out quite well so how you as a management is thinking about it or what kind of discussions have we had with the customer uh, how comfortable are they uh, with us you know bringing our own brand so if you could just talk a little bit more on that no uh, i mean uh, uh, i didn't understand the question i mean uh, you were talking on the contract manufacturing of yes, uh, some of yes, the yes so we are doing we are doing contract manufacturing and also our own brand 
So this typically uh, becomes a conflict beyond a point. Once we once we scale, uh, then it becomes a uh, challenge. No, oh, actually, what happens, you know, um, uh, we are doing for many uh, uh, many manufacturers for USA, right? Uh, there are many. In fact, they are some of them are uh, themselves manufacturers. Means they produce many sun control films and paint production films, but still we make for them because. Uh, you know, sometimes it it makes sense uh, because we have a large facility which continuously produces very highly efficient product, good quality product, right? So and uh, uh, as I said, we have one of the largest facilities, so we have to do that uh, to continuously run. But at the same time, these uh, they compete against us because the market is quite big. And the product range is quite, uh, you know, uh, uh, there are many, many varieties, more than 100 SCUs in different colors, different VLTs, different IR rejections, and all those things. So in that way, we coexist with uh, with them. And this has been uh, not only in uh, uh, USA. There are some parts of Europe also. It is it is true. So, but that goes uh, really well uh, with the understanding that uh, it is uh, very confidential, like uh, who we supply to, and they also maintain that because it's a win-win for both of us. Got it. Uh, so, last question from my end. Uh, in terms of our overall percentage PPF sales, how much do we expect the contract manufacturing to contribute in say next one to two years? I think we discussed, uh, I mean, <laughs> repeatedly on that. So overall, it's like I'm saying, uh, we always uh, control 60 to 70 percent on our brand and uh, around 30 percent on uh, contract. Good. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shubham Agarwal from Equitas Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, most of my questions are answered, but I do have uh, a few clarifications. So, uh, firstly, on the last year annual report, uh, in the related party transaction, we see that 50 crores has been uh, 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 given to Garware Industry Private Limited as processing charges. So, I just wanted to understand what is the nature of this expense and if you can elaborate on the same. Yeah. Uh uh, Hari, uh, can you answer that? Basically, the processing charges which has been uh, paid, the dyeing work is done at GIPL. So, this has been a regular feature. It's the same thing. Okay, so if, if you can just elaborate what is exactly that is uh, getting processed uh, for our understanding. Uh, Deepak, you would like uh, Mr. Arsul to uh, look at it. Uh, so, uh, Shubham, just to give a highlight, uh, 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 the dyeing process, uh, the deep dye technology which we have, deep dye technology uh, in a generic manner, uh, uh, without going to specific, Mr. Arsul will explain. Uh, uh, this particular technology is not available normally with uh, other manufacturers. In, uh, in India, we have one, and one is in USA. So only two manufacturers who use this technology. Okay. GIPL helps us do dyeing, deep dyeing of our fillings, which gives us a long-lasting uh, quality of our uh, uh, sun control fillings. So, like comparatively, there are multiple other way of uh, getting sun control fillings done, uh, blue technology, and multiple other things which uh, uh, others can explain. But in comparison, much more robust and much more long, long, uh, uh, what you call long-standing kind of uh, uh, feature is available with uh, our product, primarily because of the technology or the processes which is being given by GIPL. So this has been a, a symbiotic kind of relationship has been there since uh, almost a decade or more, okay. uh, and that's what is there. Um, Maybe uh, if you want to have a little more uh, high-level knowledge on the technology front, um, our guys can, um, technical team can explain. But this is a broader, uh, and it's primarily done on a volume basis, uh, completely uh, 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 much cheaper than what we get in market. So 
it's not uh, if we go and uh, try to obtain it uh, abroad if we are able to get it it will be much uh, costlier we are getting it done uh, at a very good price so from that perspective this is something which uh, relationship has continued for years it has been successful uh, given the materiality of the expense can't we do it in house to be can do it it's not that uh, uh, we can't do it then we'll have to see then there are couple of things we'll have to look at uh, we'll have to either merge the company with the private to uh, public uh, listed company merger so there are other things which uh, of course we are not as of now thought through because we are in the process of adding uh, different product lines etc we not looked at this particular aspect that, uh, how to announce this phone product maybe at some appropriate uh, point maybe Uh, we will look at it, but uh, we have not really thought over this particular aspect. But uh, acquiring the process, etc., maybe we can try. See, one point is we can always try. Currently, G G H F L does have uh, ability to try, but then you know we will have to at some point of time run a parallel process, invest that much amount of money, and then also uh, possibility of. Uh, what you call getting it right incorrect and then running with the other uh, contract also so we are continuing with the uh, existing contract as is very basic and the product lines are running fine profitability is coming from that particular product line so it's being run in that fashion but at going forward maybe uh, depending on time and circumstances if necessary of course everything will have to be looked at this also will be looked at Got it, sir. Got it. Uh, no, sir. Thank you for uh, answering that in a elaborate manner. And sir, secondly, my question was related to the PPF uh, division. So uh, earlier in the call, you mentioned that at appropriate time we may look to add one more line given the demand. So what would be the typical capex for adding one more line? If you can highlight that. Uh, this would be roughly, uh, I mean, uh, in the range of uh, 80 to 100 crore. Okay. Okay. And sir, uh, is it uh, also okay if you can share what is the typical margin uh, at PPF division that we are getting currently? Uh, that actually uh, uh, roughly, yeah, it's a it's a competitive information, uh, so we would like to avoid. That. I'm sorry for that. No problem. Fair. Enough. Thank you, sir, answer, for answering my questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aman Vij from Astute Investment Management. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, my question is on the uh, con- uh, consumer product division. If you can talk about what is uh, sir, the sorry to interrupt, but the line for you is not very clear. I request you to please use the handset while you're speaking. Hello. Uh, is it better now? This is much better, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So my question was on uh, consumer product division based out of India. So if you can talk about what is the number uh, for today, uh, as of today, and uh, where do you see this number uh, in the next two to three years? Given now uh, we will also be launching, we have already launched fan control films also for India. So if you can talk about this. Yeah, so uh, uh, consumer product division has two products. One is PPF, one is Sun Control. So PPF, uh, we have done uh, remarkably well uh, in uh, the growth has been quite substantial as compared to last year. And it was almost a nascent market when we started from almost no base and we have created the market. And now uh, we are creating uh, branding along with the market. So both things are really doing good. On sun control films, so we have done safety glazing material as per the government rules of uh, VLTs, and at the same time, uh, as per the BIS um, uh, standards, uh, that Bureau of Indian Standards, uh, the rule is IS 2553, where it mentions like what kind of uh, film it should be. So the conformity has also been tested. So we have launched that product, and uh, we have already started getting good traction and getting orders for that. So, in all likelihood, as I said, uh, if you ask uh, for a timeline of two to three years, I can uh, foresee around 80 to 100 CR of uh, top line and around uh, uh, 18 to 20 CR of bottom line. No, no, sir. That you explained. I was talking about the whole uh, India business combined, PPS plus SCS. PPS plus uncontrolled. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
uh, for, for India only specifically. Where do you see this uh, business in the next few uh, years? Uh, as I said, so I, I'll address uh, both uh, separately then uh, because uh, uh, there, there has been different dynamics on that. So yeah. PDF, as I said, we have uh, for, done quite good growth in last one year uh, mm -hmm. and that has been an increase on month on month basis. So we expect uh, somewhere around, uh, 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 I can say, another uh, uh, roughly uh, six to seven lakh square feet, uh, which uh, we are targeting in a year's time. So that roughly translates into, again, uh, 100 odd crores only on uh, PPS. And uh, uncontrolled, it all depends of how, uh, because there, Nothing is, uh, I mean, we are really doing well on PPF, so I can uh, safely assume that this is the, the, the revenue we can generate from uh, PPF. When we go to sun control, again, I can see the similar numbers, but there are some uh, ifs and words like how uh, uh, it is, how receptive the market is, because uh, earlier we were doing a big uh, volume and Garware sun control was a name, a big brand. I, I'm sure we will be able to do the same uh, like what we are doing in PPF, but it is yet to be seen because as I said, we just launched the product on 10th of August. So uh, we will see the response, then I will be able to comment like how fast and where we can go. Though we have the targets, but uh, uh, the ACV, uh, I mean, uh, possibility of achieving them, we will like to uh, take some time before we announce anything on that. Sure, sir. So on PPF, when we talk about full utilization of 400, 450 crore sales, only 100 crore will come from domestic. Is my understanding correct? Yeah, yeah it's a domestic we are talking. So overall, uh, we will expect more than uh, 400 uh, world over. And out of that, 100 might come from our domestic market. Sure, sure. And uh, uh, this domestic will be 100% uh, uh, our own brand, right? Yes, yes. Domestic, hundred percent Garware brand. So white label, whatever we do, uh, is for exports only. Only exports. Sure, sir. Uh, my India, next question. Yeah. So the reason also I explained uh, very clearly because uh, the lines, uh, our line capacity is very big, and at the same time, uh, you know, there are uh, we do a lot of branding efforts. But if you see in America, uh, branding means uh, sometimes even more expensive than uh, producing something. So we have to make that combination, a win-win combination for, uh, you know, uh, growth of the company and the sustainability as well. Yes, sir. On Sun Control Film, sir, you have talked about uh, because of the session and session talks last nine months, we weren't able to grow. Uh, at the same time, sir, some of the other competitors, uh, this a very strong player in PPF, was growing quite well. Uh, in Sun Control Film also. So, did we by any chance lose some market share to them, if you can talk about this one? No, in fact not. Uh, only one player, if I, because uh, we watch the competitor's performance very closely. Now, there was one, uh, only one guy who really did well. The reason of him doing uh, is that he has been, if you really see, he bought many of the uh, chains so that means uh, the he went he changed his model actually from uh, supplying to distributors to dealers so he went directly to the end customer so he bought a lot of uh, chains of uh, uh, detailing centers and invested heavily on that so if you really consider his performance you also have to see how much investment he has done to acquire uh, the, the smaller players into the market and he actually went against another competitor who was actually supplying to them. So the share has been uh, shifted from uh, these two American uh, giants uh, uh, because of one buying uh, uh, this uh, uh, downstream detailing center and other was supplying to them. So the this demand has come from inorganic way which was like uh, created, uh, which has taken by from another time. Sure, sir. That helps. My final question is on the architecture film. So, uh, globally, this is much bigger market than uh, the other kind of films, and we are still a very small player. So, if you can talk about uh, the consultant we have deployed, is it only for 
the domestic auto film market or also for architecture film market and if you can talk about in the next 3 to 4 years do you see this becoming much bigger can we reach let's say 500 crore which is still negligible global market share but is the uh, is the management thinking in that way in the next maybe 5 7 years can this scale considerably for us yeah actually um, uh, that is one of the major agenda on our uh, new product list right now so uh, for traditionally what happened is we are actually very strong on automotive but uh, last two years our capacities were almost full uh, with automotive segment uh, uh, especially last year and previous to that so uh, the total focus was on the automotive because it was we had uh, capacities uh, which were uh, falling short of the demand into the market whereas on architectural segment if you put the products are little different it's not exactly the same product which go into architectural segment and uh, we always have been a stronger player on automotive segment so uh, we have started under uh, the leadership of mr arthur uh, looking into the products around 8 10 product line uh, we have already identified and there we are uh, actually uh, taking taking trials and some of the commercialization also happened recently for european market so uh, that uh, direction we are really working hard and there are some more products which are into decorative and designer kind of space there also we are working so uh, in in going uh, 6 month to 1 year some of the product will come into the market and our share on architectural will increase but on a longer time span 2 to 3 years definitely that business uh, the new line capacity i i expect like 30 40% might go uh, to architectural as well Uh, for you miss that part can this become like a 300 500 crore business for us over the next 5 years uh that may become um, uh, uh, i i can't give you exact numbers yes but uh, the the way uh, we have been putting efforts and uh, our distributors have shown uh, the kind of product they are looking uh, to penetrate the market uh, we can in in 3 years time span uh, we can definitely touch 300 crores business. Sure, sir. That helps. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chirag Fialoke from Ratnatraya. Please go ahead. Hi. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you so much for the opportunity and congratulations on the continued execution. Uh, I had two questions from my side. Uh, one is on the resin manufacturing. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's typically not for competitors. or uh, for anyone else in the market which is something unique for us could you talk to us a little bit more about uh, you know uh, how did we do this in historically uh, additionally what kind of a cost advantage uh, if you can broadly quantify it uh, does this provide us by actually manufacturing the resin ourselves so that's the first question yeah uh, see uh, the margins uh, I mean, uh, your question is uh, for shrink films or uh, for all products? For all products. Uh, the okay, so uh, our backward integration uh, from uh, uh, like uh, resin to uh, uh, I mean, for petrochemical to resins to uh, polyester films to I mean, thermal lamination to uh, I mean, uh, dyeing of the same and then. going to metallizing and finally lamination and also some of the part of ppm so it really gives us a very good uh, uh, i mean i would say realization as compared to the competitors even if the top of the line in in usa they they buy their adhesives or they buy their coats or they buy their uh, material base material from outside whereas in sun control uh, we do most or almost everything by ourselves so that that's uh, that gives us a as a as a very good competitive advantage both in terms of uh, pricing and at the same time on quality and consistency of the product whereas on uh, paint protection films we have not been able to uh, use for our components 100% so most of them are ready with us but we are it will be a process of 6 uh, month to 1 year where we will be able to penetrate all uh, whatever we manufacture the component to put into the ppf 
and their margins will, will also signific uh, significantly improve uh, EBITDA margin on PPF side also. Now, uh, if you ask me quantify that advantage, it would be difficult often to quantify like what my competitor uh, would be doing and earning uh, versus what I am doing and earning. But definitely it's a clear edge advantage, even on uh, very simple of this is shrink films, where all the competitors are buying a resin which is like 30, 40 rupees more expensive than uh, what we produce. So this all advantage goes to us. Whereas uh, now this uh, clarity is, uh, I mean, if I talk only on industrial products, so definitely this is a big advantage uh, for us. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yash Dante Wadia from Dante Equity Research. Please comment. Yeah, I'm Yes, you're on. Please go ahead. Yeah, just wanted to uh, get an idea on the balance sheet. You guys have around a uh, few of the flow of net cash, right? Your uh, uh, voice is little, um, I mean, it's not clear. Not audible. Yeah, it's not audible now? Yeah, it's better. Hello. Hello. Yes, you are audible now. Yeah, I just wanted some ideas on the balance sheet. You guys have 300 crore of net cash, right? Yes. No, he's saying asking. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, you are saying uh, balance sheet is on net cash? Yeah. Hello. Yeah, I'm asking you if, uh, your balance sheet. Uh, I heard right. It was 300 crore net cash, right? Yeah, so uh, with whatever expansions you have planned, maybe for the next uh, one or two years, do you have enough cash to, uh, uh, you know, uh, do it through internal accruals? Yeah, correct. So we, we regularly uh, assess our cash uh, balance as well as the capex and all the evaluation. We do it continuously. So current, uh, this quarter also, we repaid some of your term loan around 50 crore in this current financial year. And uh, we have sufficient cash for expansion also in future. And also regarding the land sale, uh, uh, Nashik is uh, on for land sale or it's not for land sale? I, I didn't, I didn't catch that actually. It is under evaluation, as uh, Mr. Harina was explaining. So we are wait, we're waiting for the right uh, pricing or right opportunity to monetize that. It Approximately, what would be the land value? Yeah, uh, Hari, can you can you answer that question, please? Excuse me, sir. If you are speaking, you are not audible at the moment. No, I'm not speaking. I'm waiting for the number. No, I'm asking. Uh, sorry, I'm you are uh, looking at the Nasik uh, value. Yeah, yeah. See, currently the book value is around about 80 or so. Uh, we will uh, we'll have some pop on that particular number. All depends on the... Of course, there will be a tax element and those kind of things will be a minus to that. But there will be a reasonable amount of... Uh, this is a revalued number, it, uh, 86 or uh, 90 or crore is the revalued number in the balance sheet. I think we will get better than that. But of course, taxes will go, so net amount will be a little lower than uh, the gross amount. Did you say 890 crore? Not 890, 80, 80 to 90 crore. 890. Hello? Sorry. Hello? Excuse me, sir. This is the moderator. The current participant in the queue seems to have dropped from the queue. No, we, yeah. we will proceed with the next question, which is from the line of Gunit Singh from CCIPL. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. So, uh, as you mentioned that uh, the conditions abroad are improving and we are expecting 100% capacity utilization for PPF films and also with the new product launch in August, so, I mean, uh, in PPF, we have been clocking around 60 CR quarterly revenues. And uh, with full capacity utilization, you mentioned that around 40 to 50 CR more in that. So, I mean, as a run rate for the 
coming quarters can we expect it to be like upwards of 410 cr i mean quarterly in terms of top line like realistically yeah annual uh, revenue of more than uh, 400 crore is quite possible yeah no i'm talking about overall not ppf overall quarterly revenue i mean can we expect a run rate of about 410 crore yeah uh, uh, yeah it is uh, quite possible yes we are moving in that all right and i want to understand if i mean we can use the ipd capacity uh, for ppf like right? no, no not possible that's a very uh, different uh, line ipds are a very different line so uh, the only concern uh, which we had is uh, the ipd capacities versus uh, these uh, but we have the fungible capacities uh, to increase the productivity of ppf which uh, we are in the process of doing yeah but ipd capacity will be utilized for some of the component. raw material yeah. for ppf yeah so ipd capacities uh, are being utilized or under process for the components of ppf uh, not uh, for manufacturing the ppf but some control line can be utilized for ppf some of the intermediate processes can be done all right got it so sir directly i mean uh, we can uh, say that we can safely expect around 1600 year revenue this year looking at 400 year plus run rate and i mean better margins because of the uh, things that you have mentioned is that is my understanding correct uh i can assure you that it is going to increase uh, it is going in the right direction but exact numbers uh, we can't give but definitely uh, uh, i mean understand is correct uh, business is growing uh, so the top line will increase okay sir i have uh, my last uh, remark to make so i mean since we are sitting on net cash uh, why don't we do uh, share buybacks instead of FT dividends that we pay out as share buybacks are more tax efficient, and they are also EPS accretive in the long term. So I mean, the long term investors who who are holding the shares for a long time, they would be awarded more with the buyback rather than doing FT dividends. So I mean, I just want you to please consider to do a share buyback in future. Your suggestion is noted. All right, that's all from my side. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yash, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, as the last caller has mentioned, yeah, even uh, I was of the opinion of the buyback should be, it will reduce the uh, equity as well, and also, and also uh, regarding the uh, Sun Control Philips, sir. So we are mostly export oriented. Ninety percent is exported. because of the new regulation that happened in india and a market how the mix is going to change sorry uh, everything was clear except the last uh, last line how uh... no 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 how the mix is going to change so earlier it's 90% is export oriented so now how because there is a market in india now so how the mix is going to change see uh, as we said uh, first of all uh, that will be the incremental business for us because our new lamination line is yet to be uh, utilized fully utilized or it is in the nascent phase of utilization because it's only 6 month old so whatever business uh, will be added that will be like a additional business for us uh, for uh, sun control uh, and since this is a very new initiative which we have taken uh, since uh, 10th of august only so we will rather wait uh, prefer to wait um, uh, to see the responses but definitely we are expecting good response and this all additional business will come to us so it will not change any product mix sure sir definitely sir yeah thank you and all all the best to the management as well as all the you know employees who make this progress thank you thank you very much yes thank you very much Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nesar Parikh with Native Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking the question. Um, I just uh, I want to understand on uh, you know how do you see the uh, domestic market shaping uh, for uh, uh, PPF and uh, you know if you could just talk a bit about that and secondly you mentioned uh, no, about sorry, you know, you... but the line for you is not very clear. 
request sorry my question bit about the ppf business uh, within india and how do you see that growing and also you you know talked about uh, gs so if you could talk a bit about that yeah so uh, i mean uh, uh, unfortunately your voice was not uh, clear but uh, if i understood it correctly please say yes that you want to know the the growth of ppf in india and how the garware application studio gas is growing all right uh, so is it is yes. it your question yes yes yeah so uh, actually uh, um, as we said uh, the growth for ppf has been quite good if we compared uh, in fact 3 uh, years back there was hardly anybody understanding the ppf and whenever anybody wanted to apply it uh, that time there was hardly any studios or applicators who can do that job it is highly skilled uh, uh, labor is required to do that and uh, in usa and rest of the world uh, world people are i mean there are institutes who teach these kind of uh, techniques so uh, to looking into the create the market we started that initiative and we are happy to announce that we have already crossed 500 applicators in india trained applicators in india and uh, the the rate is around uh, now we do uh, like earlier there were uh, we were doing 20 25 applicators a month now since last six months we have doubled them so roughly 50 applicators a month we are training either fresh or refreshers so we are creating a momentum so that uh, there is a uh, i mean employment created in terms of applicators and at the same time uh, the you know the business grows because uh, if applicators are available in the b tier c, c tier cities even the lower uh, to them so the business is getting uh, increased there so i am uh, and to to facilitate the business Uh, we started a unique initiative called garware application studios so far we have around 80 studios in in place and we have a target to make 200 of them so we have lot of requests coming uh, for to allow uh, the garware application studio to allocate them but our team is evaluating them in terms of like the geographic reach is correct or the financial position is correct and the demand for ppf which makes sense for that so these all studies are in progress but we have a target to reach to 200 garware application studios which we will do and with all those efforts we have a target to reach around 180 to 100 crore of revenue from ppf in domestic market Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Parshwa Gala, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Ah, uh, hi sir. Ah, uh, very good afternoon to one and all. Ah, uh, very pleased to have seen growing decent numbers over the past few years, and we hope the same continues in the coming time. Uh, two quick questions. Ah, uh, maybe get an update on your current land in Mumbai, situated in Villapalle. Uh, as to how it's being utilized, or there are some kind of talks going on regarding the sale of the land. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, Mr. Hari Nair uh, would answer that question. Uh, hmm? Sorry, can you uh, repeat the question, please? Yeah. He, uh, he is so asking. I need to. And so for. To get on the current land which is situated in Villapalle Mumbai as yeah. to how it's being utilized or there are some kind of talks going on regarding the sale of the land see as of now we are not in a uh, what they call we are not interested in selling we have some offers for joint development uh, we are actively looking at it as of now the the way the uh, offers are it doesn't we believe that it could be much better so uh, that is the current position currently it is our headquarters uh, corporate office so uh, and plus we have one uh, garware application studio which is in this same premise so we are utilizing it in a optimal manner as of now but uh, going forward uh, maybe in longer horizon we will uh, do some kind of development in this property and uh, we will uh, 
without investing much money from the company perspective the company investing money in real estate doesn't make uh, much of a sense from a shareholder perspective or from a investor perspective so we will not do that but uh, we'll uh, take uh, some kind of a jda or it will depend on the market and the offers which come into table that's the current position all right got it and my last uh, question Uh, was uh, do you think the coming election and the political agenda that follows the election could impact uh, the numbers of the company in the recent uh, maybe the coming quarters of the year? Or, like, or do you think that these things are practical in the plan to the growth of the company? Uh, I'm really sorry. The line was uh, really bad. I could not yes. understand. No, see, uh, let me. Uh, I got the question. See, uh, uh, our most of the products are sold uh, abroad, especially the consumer products are sold abroad. We are trying to make a uh, headway in India. So, uh, and it's not uh, dependent on uh, political scenario. Economic, of course, everything is ultimately dependent on the economic, the way economy works, either in India or abroad. So, there will be some amount of. uh linkages uh, everybody is sitting in a interconnected world so there will be some interconnect uh, connection maybe second order effect or third order effect but beyond that directly there is nothing which uh, we need to look at uh, say c- consumer products we have decent enough uh, brand traction so that will continue industrial product there will be some challenges coming out of excess capacity of course at some point of time that will also Uh, uh the demand will mitigate the excess capacity but uh, there is no immediate uh, there is no interlinkage between the uh, political horizon and the uh, business horizon from our perspective all right and you have already invested heavily in r&d so do you plan to invest more in coming months or uh, you could for now so what kind of investment sorry uh the investment in r&d R&D is a continuing process, so Mr. Arsul can explain. But R&D is a continuous process. Uh, Arsul sir, would you like to give a couple of words on R&D? It's a continuous process, so we have a department which runs on it, uh, runs uh, R&D process. So uh, let let uh, Mr. Arsul speak. He is uh, expert in this matter. Yeah, uh, we have government recognized R&D centers. We have integrated two R&D centers which are recognized as uh, government of India, and uh, we have. Uh, dedicated uh, 50 plus staff uh, working in r&d um, their job is only to do uh, new product development so the, that whole staff is dedicated uh, we have very well set uh, equipment for testing so very well uh, developed laboratory we have a pilot plant for manufacturing uh, raw material we have pilot plant for processing film we have pilot coaters and we have pilot Uh, facility to do polymerization so very well equipped r&d center is there uh, so continuously people work on uh, developing a new product or upgrading existing product as well as they work on reducing the cost of the existing product so um, and uh, continuously we do benchmarking of our products uh, with our competition uh, throughout the world and we always uh, try to upgrade our products or develop a new products so we also work with our uh, uh, overseas customers and as per their request uh, we develop uh, some products so uh, we we continuously work in r&d and um, uh, uh, several different ways we uh, develop new products all right quite pleased with the performance and we hope to see the same in the coming years and the quite successful thank you for your time thank you thank you very much thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question on behalf of garware high tech films limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us you may now disconnect your lines thank you thank you thank you very much <laughs>